Today we hear the parable that Jesus told called the Good Samaritan. And every one of you knows how it goes. We call someone who does a good deed a Good Samaritan. That parable is that familiar. Many hospitals and health care facilities are called Good Samaritan. You've heard any number of homilies on the Good Samaritan parable, talking about how the priest and the Levite saw the man who had been beaten, robbed, and stripped and went to the other side of the street and ignored him. But how the Good Samaritan came, and astonishingly, the enemy of that Jewish man who had been beaten, robbed, and stripped. And the Samaritan shows him compassion. And we've heard about how so often in our own living, we resemble sometimes the priest and the Levite more than we do the Good Samaritan. And so we're warned. You know that parable, you know that explanation, and it truly is a valid one. But today, I'd like to present to you another way of looking at this parable, maybe one that you've never heard before and yet is backed up by the parable itself. And we begin by looking at who that original audience was that heard Jesus speak that parable for the very first time. Who were they, and how did they understand it? Well, they were Jewish, they were from Galilee, and they were peasants. And unlike us, they would have identified not so much with the priest, or the Levite, or the Good Samaritan, as much as they would have identified with that poor Jewish victim. They could see themselves lying in the ditch on that roadside. They understood what it would be like to be humiliated that way, to be stripped and robbed, to be down in the ditch and nearly dead. And when they put themselves in that position, they could picture what it would be like to be there in the ditch and then begin to open your eyes and lo and behold, see the face of a Samaritan, an enemy who is showing you the merciful face of God, which would lead them to wonder if my enemy shows me mercy, is that person really my enemy at all? Or is that person rather my neighbor? And do I need to go out and show mercy to other people, even going over and around the boundaries that might be there? by separation, by pride, by prejudice, by hatred. And when Jesus says at the end of this parable, now go and do likewise, they're more than likely thinking, well, if my enemy showed me mercy, then is that really my enemy at all? And if that's not my enemy, then that is my neighbor. That there are no enemies. God wants us to treat everyone as a neighbor. That is a powerful teaching. Jesus is recommending not only that we follow the example of the Good Samaritan in showing somebody else the merciful face of God, but he's also recommending that we imitate the conversion of that victim 
who was able to see God's mercy in the one he thought was his enemy, but now sees as his neighbor. I have a story to illustrate this. It's a pretty blunt story, and it makes a strong point. And here it is. He didn't know how it happened. It had never happened to him before. But there he was, a third grader, seated at his desk, and he had just wet his pants. He could hardly breathe. He was so upset. Why, when the boys noticed this, I'm never going to hear the end of it. And when my enemies, the third grade girls, see this, they're going to gossip about me, and I will be ashamed for the rest of my life. And so he bowed his head on his desk and prayed, Dear Lord, this is an emergency. Help me. Please help me. He brought his head up from the desk. And down the aisle was coming his third grade teacher. And she had that look in her eye like I know what's going on. He was so embarrassed. And then behind his teacher came a classmate a third grade girl, and she was carrying the classroom fishbowl, complete with water and fish. She's following her teacher. The teacher looks and sees her coming, goes to step aside to let her by, and Susie bumps into her teacher's hip and dumps that whole fishbowl of water and fish in his lap. He pretends to be angry, but inside he's saying, thank you, God. <laughs> thank you, God. What could have been an opportunity for ridicule now became an opportunity for sympathy. And his teacher said, go to your locker and get your gym shorts go down to the lavatory, dry off, change clothes, and then come back. And while he was out of the room, the class turned on Susie. What a klutz you are. At the end of the school day, he was out waiting for his bus. And he saw Susie waiting for her bus. So he went over to her and whispered, you did that on purpose, didn't you? And she whispered back, yes, I did. I wet my pants in school one day, too. And he looked at her face the face of one that he used to think was his enemy. And now he saw it was the face of his friend. And he said to her with all his heart, thank you. Thank you very much. Jesus tells us that familiar parable today about the Good Samaritan. And he's asking us to look not only at the compassion of the Good Samaritan, but also to look at the conversion of the victim, who was shocked to see the mercy of God coming to him from a source that he never expected, and who was forced now to see as a friend someone that heretofore he thought was an enemy. 
And Jesus says to us, go and do likewise.